Hello, I'm Lodging Editor Kate Hughes. Thank you for listening to Lodging On Demand. For this episode, we spoke with Brendan Griffith, Senior Vice President and Milwaukee Office General Manager at Reputation Partners, and Mark Natal, CEO of Smart Thinking, Inc., about crisis communications and COVID-19. My first question for you guys is, what are some of the key things to keep in mind when it comes to crisis communications in general? Uh, Brendan, let's start with you. So the way that I'm going to touch on this is, really more of the mindset that people should be taking when it comes to crisis communications, because there can be so many different tactical pieces that people are going to be thinking about and addressing that I always like to view this as more of a mindset. But I think the big thing to think about is that this is really going to be a series of events when it comes to crisis communication. Everybody's used to dealing with one-off issues that might just involve a piece of communications, you know, kind of at one point in time. Um, but true crisis communications is going to involve various triggers over the course of several hours, several days, and several weeks. So that's something that folks need to be prepared with. Um, another thing that I always like to think about, and this is often sometimes the most difficult for um, especially senior leadership, C-suite executives, is that it's okay to not know everything all at once. Um, a lot of times when we are dealing with crisis communications, we're dealing with folks that really like to plan and have the answer to everything all at once, but they need to get in the mindset of it is okay to not know everything all at once. Again, this is going to be a series of events. Information is going to come to them at different points in time um, that they're going to have to react to and communicate around. Um, and I think that really stresses the importance also of prioritization in times like this. Um, there's going to be a lot of noise out there, a lot of information is swirling around decisions that need to be made. So it's important to prioritize not only the information that you're going to want to share, but the audiences that you're going to want to reach, again, at specific points in time. Um, and then the final piece, and this is a little bit of uh, kind of two sides of the coin, if you will. Um, in any crisis, especially in today's day and age, things are going to be moving fast. Information is going to be shared at an extremely fast pace, whether that's through social, online, whatever it may be. The pace at which your organization is going to want to communicate is going to mirror that, um, that speed. But at the same time, while you're going to be moving quickly, you're going to be communicating quickly, you also want to be accurate. Um, don't want to be sharing any type of false information. And I think a lot of this goes back to it's okay to not know everything. Share what you know when you know it. Again, keeping that pace, but remaining accurate. Great. And Mark, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, I think Brendan's exactly right with that. You know, if you're coming at it from a purely a, a hotel standpoint or a resort standpoint, I, I think you know, you're going to want to continue to communicate with your audience about what's going on, but probably mostly from your point of view. And I think Brendan spoke to it properly uh, just a second ago where he was talking about not knowing, you know, you know, being able to speak about things that you know and making sure that your information is accurate. As hoteliers, our information is going to be with regards to our hotel. And I think that you're going to want to make sure that you're communicating that and your and your voice and what voice you're going to hold out there in the marketplace it probably should relate mostly to you and what you know and i think that you know staying within the boundaries of your levels of expertise is very important right now and and as hoteliers and things uh, along the uh, travel industry goes i think we're going to be talking a lot about our properties and what they mean to our audience um the only other thing i think that i would add to this is that you're you know Right now, we're very focused on the well-being of our audiences and our customers. And so just sharing that information, I don't think we should try and attempt to be the CDC. I, I think that really it should be more about letting the experts do that work there and let them make those communication points. But just not taking like an overall, you know, being sure and being sensitive to um, 
not selling a lot right now, obviously, in your communications. Like if you're just following your marketing plan, you, you need to take a, a, a step back from that and see what, you know, how does all that relate to right now? And how do you, how do you change your messaging for that for this period of time, obviously? So you started to touch on this, but let's dive a little deeper. What makes the COVID-19 crisis different from other events that you've had to respond to? Mark, let's stick with you. Well, I, there's absolutely no comparison to this, right? I, I'm thinking back um, to 2001. I, I was in uh, the New York hospitality market at that time um, when September 11th occurred. And you can draw, obviously, a lot of similarities as far as the severity and the kind of the overall shock uh, to the system that both of those, both of these situations uh, had on, on the markets. But that one was somewhat limited, right? I mean, yes, obviously, flights shut down around the country around those couple of days and things along those lines, and people might have been afraid to go to New York. But the rest of the country and the west, rest of the world operated kind of as usual. Here, we're, this is all uncharted territory. So I think that what we have to be aware of is that we've not done this before, and we hopefully we won't have to do it again anytime soon. Um, but I think that we're taking things day by day on how we're speaking with our clientele and how we're speaking with our audiences um, as this progresses. Um, you know, for the tourism industry, it presents like a, a really interesting situation because you realize uh, what role we play in people's lives now, right now, when it's taken away. Right. So when you're kind of operating normally without COVID or something, you know, a hotel uh, and travel and everything else is just kind of part of your day to day. And now when it's taken away from people, they might realize the real value that it has. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens when we do get back to a situation where social distancing isn't as strict and we get back to a bit, a bit more of a normal pace to things like what that will what that will mean for the travel industry, what that will mean for hotels, for, you know, people that I think are really primed and ready and thirsting for those experiences, again, of socialization and wanting to be back, you know, enjoying the things that they did before this. And Brendan, what do you think? How has it been different for you from other events that you've had to respond to? I mean, Mark said it perfectly right out of the gate just the fact that this impacts everybody. Um, I know a lot of people, the word unprecedented has been thrown around all over the place, but rightfully so. I mean, this is totally unprecedented. Just the fact that it's impacting every person in every industry, in every corner of the country, that is something that I don't think any communicator, anybody that deals in crisis communications has ever dealt with before on this level. Um, you know, it's interesting when you look at it, where typically, if you're doing crisis communications with any organization, oftentimes, when they're dealing with an issue, any type of wrongdoing, any type of full scale crisis, it's typically their organization that is in the spotlight or in the hot seat. And they're trying to deal with external audiences, internal audiences, various stakeholders, um, and really taking the heat and trying to navigate their way, oftentimes in the public eye on how they deal with an issue. Um, this really, I don't want to say that that's not the case here, but there are just so many organizations that are in the exact same boat as what several of our hotel clients or anyone in the hospitality industry, you know, the whole, we're all in this together. Everybody's going through the same thing right now. So it's interesting when you look at it from that perspective, more kind of the external lens of organizations that are dealing with this are not going to be in the hot seat like they typically would be because there's so many others that are going through the same situation. Um, but I do think that this creates an interesting opportunity. And Mark also noted on this is that um, I think this gives an opportunity for organizations and, you know, I'm just going to use hotels for them to really be focusing on 
their internal audiences, really focusing on their associates and their teams and how they work with them to navigate this crisis. Um, you know, especially in the hotel business, it's all about the experiences. It's the experiences that we create for our guests, for our teams. And right now, the folks that we can most impact are going to be those associates that work at our various properties and are on the ground. And how we communicate with them and treat them will really be that starting point for when we get back to the new normal, the experiences that we create with our teams and how we make them feel, how we communicate to them throughout all of this and keep them informed. That's just a starting point for creating that great experience that they can then replicate with our guests. When we get back to normal, people are able to travel, people are able to visit different cities, get out and about and just experience our different properties. So I, I think that's a very unique opportunity that we typically don't see in all crises like this, where we can really focus on that in, internal audience as kind of um, our main focus at this point. How can you tailor your messaging when it comes to communicating with different groups? Because like you said, how, you, how you're speaking to your, your employees is definitely different from how you're communicating with potential or even existing guests at this point. What would you do differently if you were talking to one group versus the other? I really think it's, a, it's definitely a little bit of threading the needle here. Um, obviously, when it comes to messaging for any group, um, it's all about consistency. And I think what makes this situation so difficult and any communicator would tell you this, especially over the last month or last several weeks, is that things are changing, or at least were, but I, I think things are still changing on a daily basis. Um, so the messages and the information that we want to get across is always shifting. But when it comes to messaging, um, you just want to be as consistent as possible. Really, the way that I view this and kind of how we approach this with um, any organization that's going through a client is you really want to develop those overarching, consistent messages that can apply to all of your audiences so that they're hearing several of those same messages, just hitting them over and over and over again. But you do want to develop messages that are specific to each one of your different audiences. Um, and I think it's really just identifying what's going to be most important to those various, uh, various audiences. You know, if it's your employees, it might be thinking about, you know, how is this going to impact my health care and all my different benefits? Um, do you want to be focusing on operations? Are there any type of um, financial positioning that you need to be communicating with investors or shareholders. Um, so it really is kind of just that cascade of what are those top line messages that you want everybody to hear and that you as an organization want to be sharing, but then really figuring out those touch points. Um, and in some cases, those pain points that might be most important to your various audiences and really just tailoring your messages so that you're touching on those for the different audiences. And Mark, what do you think? How would you tailor things depending on your audience? Well, I think Brendan is correct when he talks about different stakeholders that you have to be speaking to here. They're all looking for the same thing, which is some sort of stability and some sort of concept of, of safety and things along and that we're going to be all right in this. I think, you know, with your, with your employees, obviously the right now we're in a strange situation, right? Cause we're pretty, you know, from a day-to-day -day operation standpoint for hotels, you're, you're probably not doing anything or very few people are, I would think other than the major metropolitan cities that are probably servicing emergency medical workers, mostly. Um, this is, you know, it's interesting in the fact that we're a brand development group. And so we talk a lot about this, you know, what is the brand tone of voice? What's the brand message? What are the brand promises that you're going to uh, live by as an organization? And I think that these are the things that are important now more than ever, because it's basically why we do what we do the way we do. And so your messaging might be tailored uh, according to the situation right now, depending upon the, the groups that you're speaking to, but it shouldn't differ so much from 
who you are as a brand in the first place. You're still telling that story. You're just telling it during um, sensitive times. And so it's interesting because now you, you'll talk with, we'll talk with different clients about their tone of voice and, and the way they're using it. And there's, you know, some clients that I'm sure everybody can identify out there that have a bit more of a witty tone or something along those lines to their tone of voice. Those kind of things are taking a bit of a back burner right now, right? We're not really looking to get a tremendous amount of laughs out of our audience or things like that. We're trying to probably comfort them more than anything and let them know that we're here and still part of their life. And so I think that those kind of, to me, it's that major component of stability. I think that's what people want to hear more, more than anything, because right now we seem to lack it in all different ways. And I think as an organization, if you can communicate your sense of stability or where right now you're not sure where things are going, but that you're going to be working hard to solve those issues for those stakeholders, for employees, for audiences that might be there uh, or might be coming back there soon, hopefully. Um, those are all things that you want to be strategizing now about, you know, um, in, in trying to I guess, deliver the right message at the right time. It's what Brennan was speaking about earlier, you know, as things change, being able to be in that moment and communicate the right, accurate information. So a lot of the crisis communication recommendations out there um, are pretty consistent that you should have someone who is the point of contact for all communication. So no one's really speaking off the record. So does that still apply in this situation? Should it always be the same point of contact for if someone's looking for uh, more information about what a property or a, a group is doing about the crisis? Mark, go ahead. I think it's interesting right now because if you think about it, it's so failure and what we're doing as far as crisis communication goes right now. I don't know if there is a tremendous amount of communication going on right now, right? Of, of that are things of like the day-to-day -day that are happening. I, I guess... Kate, do you have an example in mind as far as like a particular operational situation that might be happening right now? Because I think that if you were to think about probably the majority of properties are closed right now and do not have guests in-house. Um, and so their communication, I would think, is fairly limited to social media and some email messaging that you're doing. I mean, you haven't, hopefully you haven't abandoned your marketing campaign completely. You've toned it down and you've changed it and you've probably reduced it accordingly, but you, hopefully you haven't gone off the grid and just gone away. Um, but as far as the crisis communication that most hotels are, prob are, are responsible for at this time, I would think would be fairly limited because of their interaction with people is fairly limited right now. So I don't know what crisis communication they would be having at the moment. Um, Unless they're, like I said, unless they have guests in house, which are probably different situations um, for, like I said, major metropolitan areas that might have EMS workers in house and things like that, that they brought into town to house during this uh, situation. And they're obviously, you're, I would think in those situations, yes, you would have a single point of contact, a quote unquote SPOC, if you will, right? Single point of contact where those people are going to and getting the information that they need. But I don't know. I mean, maybe Brendan has some ideas on that as well too, but I, I would think that really our crisis communications around the idea of an actual ongoing crisis right now are fairly limited because of our involvement of who we are, who we are as hoteliers and what our interaction levels are right now with our guests, which I would think are pretty minimal on, on the whole. That makes a lot of sense. Brendan, do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, and I, I'm going to come at this from a true crisis communications perspective uh, because I, I completely agree with Mark that where we are at at this point in the COVID crisis, um, communication is not going to be happening with some of our core audiences as frequently as maybe it was two, three, four weeks ago. Um, and, and I completely agree that hopefully organizations have not gone completely dark, but in terms of sharing information, the status of the organization, where we're at, that type of communication has definitely, you know, the frequency of that has likely, if not certainly, gone down. Um, 
but when you are in the midst um, and kind of in the thick of things with a crisis or a large scale scale issue, um, I definitely think that it is advantageous and highly recommended to have a single point in contact or a select few points in contact. Um, and a lot of this comes down or kind of goes back to consistency. Um, a lot of times during a crisis or an issue, um, especially as an organization, you really want to establish establish yourself as the center for information. And you can use this one single point in contact to be the individual within your organization who um, carries enough sway, is a recognizable figure, ideally somebody within your senior team who can be that single point person to be sharing information. Your teams get used to hearing from him or her. They're, they basically become the trusted source of information so that if any new decisions or anything that might impact your organization um, is going to be coming down and shared with the broader organization. Everybody knows that it's going to be coming from that specific individual. Um, you know, there are going to be certain times where depending on the topic, um, let's say it has to do with health and benefits, um, especially since that's been a pretty big topic throughout this crisis with all of either laid off or furloughed employees, um, especially at hotels. It might make sense to have that type of information come from somebody in HR, but again, identifying the one individual spokesperson within that department who can serve as kind of the information hub and the go-to source for that type of information. So I do think that it definitely it is advantageous to have one or a very limited number of spokespeople throughout a crisis, um, again, to be that information hub. And also, it just limits the amount of variations of your different messages, maybe information being shared that shouldn't have, or even if it's not so much shouldn't have, but maybe at the right place, the right time. So it's just best to always kind of limit the amount of spokespeople. To pivot to something a little more positive, how after all of this passes or, or starts to um, slow, do you transition your calm strategy to this return to normalcy? Mark, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, I do. I think that's really, uh, you know, to, to reference the question before, I think that's really where the opportunity lies right now is, you know, what are we communicating with our guests? And, and I think this is a bigger discussion that happens about the, the role that we play in people's lives anyway. We're more than just a place to sleep for the night, right? Or we're more than just a place to get a meal while you're on the road. Uh, we, you know, hotels really serve a very important function for people, obviously, from those standpoints that we, I just discussed is like it's food and shelter and things along those lines. But I think the greater discussion here is about what roles hotels play. And I, and I think that it's important, uh, particularly even before this situation occurred with COVID-19 right now, is that in a world that was turning it is turning more and more digitally focused, right? Where you can retailers and things like that are, are being harmed by online work and the ability to buy online and things along those lines where people are moving more in a digital realm. Our product is, as Brendan said, it's completely 100% experiential. You can't, you can't consume it online. Um, you can only experience it in person, which is a great opportunity, right? In order to the fact that we really can create these experiences for people that they can't get anywhere else. And so now when you take that away, I think people have even more appreciation of what it is that any one particular property and or vacation destination might mean to them. And you see that now, you see people talking online about, you know, oh, I miss going here because uh, this is where I got engaged, or I miss going here because it's where my parents took me to see my grandparents every year, or, you know, they go down this line of all these different memories that they've made at your property. And it's really, you know, it should be pretty uh, eye-opening for people to realize that all these special moments happen at our properties. And so 
I think that, you know, now the, the communication, what we are communicating is hoteliers and things along those lines. Uh, what we are communicating now is that we're communicating the stability of our organization that we know that we're going to come back after this. And that when we do come back after this, we're going to be there to provide these fantastic experiences for you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your, you know, your, your employees, if you hold business meetings at the hotel, all those different things. We're going to be there to communicate those uh, or to provide those for you when we do come back. And now, while we're on this kind of extended hiatus, we should be having those discussions, you know, via social media, via, you know, select email uh, um, uh, emails that you might be sending out to people. Um, all of those things are opportunities for you now to to provide that stability for people, to provide those memories uh, for people, and to let them know that when we get back uh, underway here, we're going to be your place to come to. We're waiting to see you, and we're going to be ready for you. We're going to provide the safety and the security and the stability, but we're also going to provide the great adventures. We're going to provide the fantastic social moments. We're going to provide the great meals. I was talking to a friend and colleague of mine the other day, and she was saying, like, I, I can't wait to just go and sit down and have somebody serve me a drink. You know, and it's like these ideas of what we took for granted, you know, of like going and sitting down and having a meal with friends, those are all gone right now. And so we want to be prepared um, to deliver that again. Um, and we should be talking to people about how we're preparing for that now. And you know, and sharing those memories with people uh, in our communications now, because it, you know, it, I think that's really where your true value is, is like I said earlier, is providing that stability and that understanding of for people that, you know, we're not going anywhere. And uh, we'll, we'll be here when when this is over. And, and we can't wait to see you again. Brendan, do you have anything to add? I know we're all stuck at home. Right now, we're missing a lot of Things that we're used to doing, whether it's like, like Mark was saying, uh, going out and having a drink with somebody or having somebody serve you a great meal out at a restaurant, whatever it might be. Um, but we're going to get through this and we are going to get back to some sense of reality, um, even if it is a new normal. Um, so if organizations aren't thinking about this and kind of how they change their communication strategy moving forward, they definitely should be. Um, and a lot of what Mark was saying, I completely agree with that it's more focusing on your customers, your team, and really getting back to how you can promote and communicate um, about the experience that you offer. Um, I think that there is going to be a tendency for a lot of organizations when they come back, um, and I'm especially thinking from like a PR perspective, that they're going to want to go out externally in the media and, you know, tout that they're back. You know, things are back to normal, guests can come, and I worry that it's going to come across as a little too salesy. Um, completely agreed with, I know Mark mentioned it earlier in this discussion that, you know, now is not the time to sell. And I don't think that when we get back to a little bit of normal, I don't think that that is the time to sell either. And it kind of goes back to something that I was touching on earlier that this is impacting everybody, hotels all across the country and really anybody in hospitality, whether or even, you know, retail, restaurants, whoever everybody is going through this right now. So if as an organization, you think that going out and touting yourself in the media is the immediate go-to, I, I really think that that is a missed opportunity or kind of your priorities in this place, because there are going to be so many other organizations who went through this as well. It's not going to be a way to really differentiate yourself in the media, but instead focus on some of your stakeholders and your audiences that were most impacted by this, your people, your guests, and figure out how you can really be communicating with them about what you did during this pandemic, how you got through it together, maybe different programs or initiatives that were put in place during this or that you're going to be putting in place to recognize all the hardships that folks have gone through and really focus on their, those audiences. Because I, I do feel that 
going back to the whole experience piece is that it starts with your people. They're the ones who are on the ground working on your properties, working in the hotels who help to create that experience. So if you can really focus on them, communicate with them and get them back to normal, they're going to basically be the best advocates for your business, for your properties in their social channels, how they promote on your behalf, and just really getting the word out there that things are back to normal, what you're focused on as an organization. And I think it'll trickle from there. Well, guys, thank you so much for making time to talk to me today. I really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Lodging On Demand. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Or you can listen to Lodging On Demand as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify.